This is the fifth state winning headlines. Your media police post coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya, from the Photo School of Government. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning. But we also take a look at some of the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 5th of May 2022, and I am 2M. I am Serbia. And I am 2J. And in case you missed today's headlines, here they are. In the Daily Nation, did he talk himself out of a job? The Standard, the man set to be Ruto's deputy. In the Star, Raila's new Mount Kenya game plan. And in the People Daily, not yet to huru for Azimio aspirants. Mm. So this week, the IBC told us that the 2022 election will have a record 55 presidential candidates. <laughs> that means 55 presidential candidates and also 55 running mates. Mm. That is 110 ways that things can go wrong in the next three months. Yes. And we're not being alarmist. Mm. This is all based on law. Yeah. Under Article 138, 8B of the Constitution, if a presidential or running mate candidate dies before August 9th, mm. the election is cancelled and a fresh election held 60 days later on October 10th, 2022. Mm. This means that if one of our 110 candidates dies from COVID before August 9th, fresh election. If maybe one of the candidates has a dying wish to run for presidential office and he ascends to the heavens before we go to the ballot, fresh election. In short, <laughs> we are staring a logistical and national security nightmare in the face. Yes. How did we get here? Yeah. I'm going to tell you. Mm. When the Committee of Quacks drafted the 2010 Constitution, <laughs> They did not envision an election cycle with this many candidates, especially independent ones. Mm. Yes. Why else would the death of either presidential or DP candidate trigger a fresh election? Mm. Mm. And that is why in the United Kingdom, if an independent candidate dies, the election continues as normal. Why? Because an independent candidate with the head of a coconut cannot hold a whole country hostage yes. during a general election. Absolutely. And in the United States, the obvious replacement for a presidential candidate who dies is their running mate, mm. who is running to be a presidential understudy anyway. Correct. Now, this of course is a conversation for another day. But as a country, we are constantly living on the edge of a constitutional crisis mm. because of that committee of quackery <laughs> who put us here. <laughs> now back to the point. Yeah. The question we must ask is this. Mm. Why would anybody want to postpone an election by 60 days? Mm. And who would benefit from that? Mm -hmm. Let me share just two thoughts. Okay. One, when Moraga nullified the election in 2017, he gave all future candidates a cheat sheet yes. on how mm. to misengineer an election. Yes. Let us call this the Maraga cookbook. Mm. Now in this cookbook, one will find all of the mischief needed to nullify, postpone, and put electoral results into question. Correct. Mm. When Baba was in opposition, this got him a second election. Mm. Is this the Ruto plan for August 9th? <laughs> and two, it is a fact that William Ruto needs the presidency now. Yes. Cash flow problems and the ICC are just the tip of the iceberg. So if he's forced to wait another 60 days, he may just lose the election. Correct. So a scenario outlined under Article 138 mm. may buy time to slow Ruto down. <laughs> and I'll tell you this, the deep state has done far worse. Yes. <laughs> now these are just thoughts, mm. and I could be wrong. Yeah. But even if no candidate dies before election day, the sheer complexity mm. of a 55 person election is a big problem. Wow. Can the IEBC handle this? Or are we headed towards a drawn out and messy election? Woof. Oh, yes. 55 we'll see. 55, Tragic presidential and only. <laughs> Goodness, that's, so. that's the size of a classroom. <laughs> it is. In a public school. <laughs> So today I would like to congratulate Kiambu UDA Women Rape Aspirant Anwa Murada for showing us how Kikuyus ought to be treated. 
In a video from a few months ago, Wamurada is seen feeding cake to the people of Ruiru by throwing it at them. Mm. Like she was feeding pigeons or chickens. If this was not tragic, it would have been humorous. Even dogs and any other pet nowadays are fed in a more <laughs> dignified manner. That video shows us what UDA leadership looks like. Mm -hmm. A cameo of things to come. The people of the mountain clamoring, scrambling for literal crumbs mm. thrown at them like they were animals. Mm. And this is what they deserve. Yes, until they realize their worth. Mm. Let me explain. Kikuyus are following UDA blindly in the name of punishing Uhuru Kenyatta. Yeah. And by doing this, Kikuyus have cheapened themselves. Yes. The politics they are now engaging in is not even for their own self-interest, but to cater to others. Mm -hmm. right. This can be attested by the Kawanjiko, Koimbori, and Wamurada prototypes imposed and planted all over Gema. And by a quick look at the people, UDA is fronting as running mates for the presidency. Mm. In two words, they are absolute jokers. Nothing more than pedestrian leaders only planted in Gema nation, while other counties, even the far off marginalized people like the Pokot and Turkana are electing professors. Mm. Even in Ruto's own backyard Kericho, the UDA governor and his deputy are a doctor and an engineer. Yes. <laughs> this goes to show just how blinded Gema is to common sense and logic. Fantastic. Mm. The Gema counties, which are considered the bedrock of Kenya's economy, have now been left to draw a line when it comes to their leaders. They have been hoodwinked to shun intelligent and educated leaders, even though the chief hustler is a doctorate holder himself. Mm, yes. Instead, they have <laughs> opted for mediocrity and other retrogressive shenanigans. Yes. They have accepted the cheap economic ideology of handouts and wheelbarrows, and with it, they have lost their identity, dignity, and respect. Mm. They have now been reduced to hecklers at funerals, putting their grandmothers on top of wheelbarrows, and their leaders being slapped and assaulted in the corridors of Karen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this madness can be compared to a popular urban legend about the infamous Soviet leader, Joseph Stalin. Yes. Mm. The story is about how easy it is to govern the blind and the ignorant. Yes. One day at the Kremlin, Stalin gathered his closest comrades. He then asked them a simple question, how have I managed to rule Russia? Yes. When no one could answer, he grabbed a live chicken and plucked out its feathers in front of them. Yes. Down to every last feather until it was red and bloodied. Mm -hmm. yes. And then he set it free. Yes. And to the shock of his comrades, the chicken refused to move. Yes. Fearing the hot sun and the freezing cold, it stayed pressed onto his boot. Yes. Stalin then tossed the poor bird some crumbs of grain, mm. and to the shock of his comrades, the bird followed him. <laughs> it followed him everywhere he went. Yes. He then told his pupils, no matter how much pain you cause them, yes. as long as you oppress them and toss them some meaningless treats, once in a while, they will follow you, yeah. no matter what. Mm. This is a tale representing Kikuyu's right now. It shows the hallmark of naivety when Kikuyus allow themselves to be treated like trash so as to get back at Uhuru. Well, Gemma should remember that Uhuru has nothing to lose. Mm. If you thought Uhuru's legacy is written in a pencil, then think again. <laughs> Uhuru's <laughs> legacy cannot be erased. Yes. And maybe Kikuyus are behaving this way because they have had it good and easy for 20 years. Right. Yes. Maybe things have been too good for them when their own has been president. Yes. Mm. That is why they need at least 10 years out of power to reset and recalibrate their thinking. Yes. 10 years where Ruto will ensure they remain poor, ignorant, and desperate. Right. Then they will realize that if Ruto's 10 years as deputy president didn't change their lives, even 100 years will not be enough. Hmm. Woo. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> <laughs> Now, today we want to give the chief hustler the benefit of doubt by interrogating Kenya's economic health. Mm. Ruto has told the world that Kenya is worse off economically than Uhuru found it. In interrogating this assertion, we will change form for a moment. We will not look at Kenya as a country, we will look at Kenya as a company. Mm -hmm. In fact, we will call it Kenya Incorporated Limited, mm -hmm. Kenya, Inc. Kenya Inc. And if Kenya is a company, then that which we will have in August is not an election. Mm. It will be an annual general meeting, an AGM. Yeah. In every AGM, shareholders meet to decide in which direction the company will go. 
True. Shareholders vote on the leadership and decisions of the company. Mm. They can either kick out old leadership or hire new leadership. But more importantly, the main interest of shareholders is ROI, return on investment. Mm. Has a company made profit or not? Mm. And if company has made profit, what are the dividends? Mm. If we appraise Kenya Inc. with Uhuru Kenyatta seated as board chair, how would, this uh, how would his performance look like? Mm. By the time he took over as board chair in 2013, Kenya Inc. had a GDP of 4.5 trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. By August this year, he will be leaving Kenya with a GDP of 13 trillion shillings. Wow. This means that Kenya Inc. made a profit of approximately 9 trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. This would be Kenya's highest valuation ever. In fact, he would be the first board chair in Kenya's history to have uh, more than double Kenya's valuation and also the first board chair to have done it in less than 10 years. And that's a fact. Wow. Mm. But let us break it down a little more. Should you, the shareholders of Kenya, choose to sell Kenya right now, mm. each Kenyan would go home with $2,000 or 236,000 shillings. Mm. Should you have chosen to sell Kenya Inc. in 2013, mm -hmm. each Kenyan would have gone home with 120,000 shillings or $1,200. In essence, it means every shareholder of Kenya Inc. has increased their shareholding by 116,000 Kenya shillings in the last nine years. Mm. And even if you were to deduct Kenya's Inc. national debt of 100,000 shillings per person, each Kenyan would still have 136,000 shillings to play around mm. with. This would be 16,000 shillings more than what the colonizers, mm. Jomo, Moi, and Kibaki combined had made for Kenyans in over a century. Mm. Mm. What's my point here? Chief Hustler's critique of Uhuru's economic performance is downright mediocre. Mm. Uhuru has doubled the wealth of the colonizers, Jomo, Moi, and Kibaki. Uh, the wealth of Jomo, Moi, Kibaki, and the colonizers had left Kenya Inc. Mm. If anything, Ruto's argument should be how to surpass Uhuru's performance. Yes. Anything else is just gibberish. Absolutely. But even more, no sane shareholder will trust a ghost board chair <laughs> to take over the reins of a $113 billion company. Board chair must be board chair at all times. Oh, yes. No chicken selling, <laughs> no fake gun dealing, no theft, no land grabbing, no nothing, no kene and no, nothing like that, period. <laughs> Question is... Can you all trust William Ruto as board chair of Kenya Inc? Mm. Do you trust him to make your money or to take your money? Jury is out. That is such a good question. So on that note, we have a three-part criteria that we used to judge the headlines by. We ask ourselves, is the headline topical or speculative, repetitive or groundbreaking, and finally thoughtful or just plain lazy? I'll go through them again. Daily Nation, did he talk himself out of a job? Mm. The Standard, the man set to be Ruto's deputy, mm. the star, Ryla's new Mount Kenya game plan, and finally, People Daily, not yet Uhuru for Azimio aspirants. I want to say something about the Standard, the man set to be Ruto's deputy. Who is this man? <laughs> it's a Kadhure Kandiki. Kandiki? Mm -hmm. that, that's his name? Oh God, Kadhure Kandiki. <laughs> Let me tell you what, William Ruto <laughs> cannot choose a, a deputy like William Ruto. Mm. You have to choose someone who's a little bit docile. Yeah. And mm. if you look like, uh, uh, Kandiki, what's his name again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, Just like, say it. Like Prof says, he, he speaks like a girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, that man cannot be. No, I agree. I feel like uh, Ruto's MO has been to choose weak and, as you said, docile people. Yeah. So that he can be the strong man in can the room. Dominate. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, that's the, I, I would give that credence, but I also think it's a decoy. Yeah. No, I would agree. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, the Daily Nation, did he talk himself out of a job? I think that's in relation to Kalonzo, who mm. has refused to participate in the Azimio running mate interviews, which I think, I believe, were changed anyway. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So did he talk himself out of a job? And it's too early to tell. Right? Okay. Uh, I think we toss the star, we toss the people daily, and we toss the standard as well. Yes. I do like this headline, did he talk himself out of a job? It's catchy. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I agree, it's too early to tell, but yeah. it's intriguing. Mm. Absolutely, I agree. All right. On to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country, we also have a three-part criteria. We ask ourselves, are the cartoons humorous or dry, satirical or pessimistic, and finally effective or just plain lazy? Mm. 2M, would you kick us off with the Daily Nation? Daily, Daily Nation, you have Ndula there, and there you have IBC Clarks. Uh, there's a guy there, he's counting 
he's counting the ballots in the ballot paper mm. after the after the voters have uh, voted mm. and the caption there is voting independence and i think this is with regard to what uh, junior you said you yeah. have 55 presidential independent candidates but in total there mm. are 7213 candidates it, it, on the entire ballot that's from presidential what? governor senator mm. MP all the way down to MCAs. Let me booklet. tell you, this is uh, this will not be an election. This will be an examination. You, know? <laughs> you enter the classroom, you have 55 questions. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, this will form such a logistical nightmare. Yeah. Mm. If it took a voter a minimum of nine minutes or seven minutes to vote in the 2017 election, mm. can you imagine what it will do this time? It will oh. probably take you 20 minutes. Right? It's going to be a mess. I mean, you, you will have lines from KICC to all the way to Turkana. Mm -hmm. you, you know, for one guy just waiting to vote. And do people have the stamina to wait all that Nobody, time? And, you know so we're what? saying if the polls open at 6 a.m., yeah. people have about 18 hours Absolutely. to go vote, assuming uh, that they wait until midnight. Absolutely. And it's not like they can go and vote on August 10th, because yes. the Constitution says mm. that an election of a president and a general election will happen on the second Tuesday of, of August, August every five, every five years. years. So that's it. It's that's done. It. I mean, mm. the voter turnout here will be, what, 20%? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let's put that in the parking bay and mm -hmm. let's take a look at uh, the standard and the mm -hmm. star together. Yeah. Uh, Serbia, why don't you look at the star first? Okay, so we have Kalonzo outside the room looking very scared. I think he's waiting for <laughs> an interview. Yeah. And next to him is uh, Ruto. Yeah. I think uh, whispering to him, definitely mm. something clandestine. Mm. <laughs> so Ruto, of course, poking his nose where it shouldn't be in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. And in the standard, uh, much on the same vein, yeah. we have a caricature of Bavaman holding up a flag that says Azimir Lamoja. <laughs> and on the flag is a chameleon, no <laughs> doubt in reference to Kalonzo. <laughs> <laughs> and the chameleon is holding onto the flag for dear life, even with his tongue. tongue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think both of these cartoons are in reference to the running mate question. Yeah. So the question I wanted to ask, yeah. I've been seeing a lot of this online, just in general discourse. Right. Why is UDA insisting yeah. that Raila select Kalonzo as his running mate? The, and I, I yeah. want to answer the question myself. Yeah. I think that if they, if Raila chooses Kalonzo, mm. it gives um, Ruto every opportunity to mm. choose Mudavadi. Mm. Mm. This is a plot to rig out Kikuyus for the running mate position mm. in both major parties. Yeah. That's just my hypothesis. This yeah. is UDA stirring the pot. I tell you what, these fellows here, they're just changing focus and decoying everybody from what's happening uh, in, their, in their camp. In their own camp. Mm. Uh, Ruto has a lot more mouths to feed. <laughs> He's got a lot more uh, personalities to, to, to please. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wants the running mate position. And if there's a fallout in Kenya Kwanzaa, that, that's it. That's yeah, a wrap. Yeah. If Rigadi Gashagwa is not chosen as a running mate and Musale is chosen, so that's bad. it. Kikuyu is a bolt out. Mm. If Rigadi is chosen, then Muranga and Kiambu will, will feel bad. You know, man is caught out. Yeah, yeah. In a hard yeah, yeah, place. Yeah. It's in a hard place. All right. So on that note, do we have a winning cartoon? I think we go with Ndula, Daily Nation. Daily Nation, mm -hmm. really? Okay, I know, I, I agree, it's topical. Yeah. And I think Kenyans really need to take a moment to understand how difficult this logistical you know, election is going to be. Absolutely. We're getting closer and closer to a 2023 version yeah. of an election. Absolutely, and it's not just the voting process, it's end to end, from voting to mm. tallying to transmission. Right. This will be a problem, a logistical mass. nightmare. Right, expensive too. Exactly, all right, so I'm gonna toss all the cartoons and we award the winning headline to the Daily Nation. Also the winning uh, headline to the Daily, no sorry, yes, winning headline to both the Daily, Daily Nation. Nation. Yeah, and the exactly. Uh, so on that note, uh, don't forget to find us on your TV screens. We're also on Go, Go TV, Pang Free to Air, and wow, I messed that up. <laughs> Pang Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Um, I have a little note mm. for Kikuyus. Mm. The opposite of courage is not cowardice; it is conformity. Mm. Even dead fish can go with the flow. Hey. That was said by a man called John Hightower. Yeah, think about that. So uh, we hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining. God bless.